Good morning, good morning, Rabotai. Welcome to Breakfast in the Class. Breakfast in the Class today is sponsored and dedicated to Lunishmat Hanale, Bat Shraga, and Shimon Ben David by their daughter, Razy Katz. And as well, a Breakfast in the Class is sponsored by Stephen Rappaport, dedicated in honor of Chacham Azriel Mansur. Also, Be'ezrat uh, Hashem, we should be zochet to see Erifu Ashadema for Herschel Ben Farida. Uh, and for the Tinoch that we've been praying for for the last couple of days as well. The Pasuk <coughs> tells us, Amen. It's a beautiful Pasuk. And you shall sanctify him because he brings the bread of your God. He sacrifices the bread of your God. Because I am holy. Now, it's a very interesting concept here. So we just read all about the interesting and different laws that a Kohen has to his other, other brothers, the Jewish people. Okay? Uh, uh, Levi Yisrael might be a very big tzaddik, might be a Talmud Chacham, might be someone who has all sorts of zechuyot, might be very holy. Might even be like our dear friend over here, who gave tons of tzedakah this morning, who was appointing people for shaliach to give tzedakah in the, mem- in the memory of Rabbi, Rabbi Meir Bal Hanes, Hazaku Baruch Rabbi Yitzchak, right? We saw a person doing all sorts of zechuyot, but if he's not a Kohen, however holy he is, however big the sigula is, however special what he's done is, he's not a Kohen, right? Now sometimes a person thinks that's a strange thing. It doesn't really fit our religion, does it? Like, it should all really be merit-based. You know, in other religions or in other political systems, you look at something and you say, oh, okay, this is about who you knew, who your grandfather was, you know. But in Judaism, it's not supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be completely dependent on your achievements. Now, I always struggled with this. There's a Mishnah, the Mishnah says as follows. If a person has an opportunity to give kavod to a Kohen, who's a Kohen Gadol, but he's an Amaaretz. The guy doesn't know anything. He's not a Sadiq. He's not a Tamil Chacham, but he's got, the, he's got the position. He's the highest position on the totem pole, if you will, in terms of a, a position that a person can have. Yet, he's sitting at a meal together with a, with a Talmid Chacham who's also a Mamzer. The guy was born of an illicit relationship. Parents had an adulterous relationship. That's what we're talking about, okay? In a case like that, this guy is a Talmid Chacham. No one will marry the person. At the same time, what does the Mishnah say? You have a choice. Who are you going to honor with the benching? Who are you going to honor to do Zimun? Who are you going to honor to come, you know, to give a dirashah? Who's going to... It's going to be the, the Talmid Chacham, who's a Mamzer. So it always struck me. I don't understand. So what you're telling me is that really the system should be based on... And who does it favor? It favors... The effort, it favors the work, it favors what the person did. So then why do we have the system? It's like the Torah says, here's a class system, it's very pertinent to the conversations of the day, okay? Here's a class system, here's a social system, but, whisper, whisper, nod, nod, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, you could really ignore it if the guy doesn't matter. If you have a merit-based system, why do you have a social system? And if you have a social system, why do you have a merit-based system? Does this bother anybody? I don't know, I think especially now where this is the conversation non-stop in the world around us, you know, you notice it within your own, within your own religion, your own customs. So I was thinking a lot about this. And I want to share with you something that I thought um, that meant a lot to me, was very powerful to me. Let's come back to this Pasuk again, okay? So the Pasuk says about this Kohen, V'kidashto, and you shall sanctify him. Elevate him. How do we, how are we, Mekadesh Kohen? This morning, when Mark came to the Minyan, and we gave him an aliyah, got two for the price of one, right? Because we didn't have a Levi. The Kohen walks in, oh, Chavod. Kohen Aole, Yamod Bechavod. Time for Berkat Amazon. Do we have a Kohen at the table, right? Your Kohen is sitting at the table, you're not supposed to ask him to serve you. I know rabbis, if there's a Kohen at the table, they won't ask them to pass the fish because that is using a Kohen to serve you. The only, they get up, the rabbi gets up to serve the Kohen. Why? V'kidashto. 
The concept of the Levi washing his hands, the Kiddeshto. You elevate a Kohen, and this is any Kohen. Okay? Because he, he sacrifices the Korbanot. Today he doesn't do that, but the Mitzvah of Kiddeshto is still there. In fact, there's even a question brought down in Halakha. What happens if you as a rabbi have a student who's a Kohen? And the Kohen wants to be Mishamesh, his rabbi. Rabbi, can I give you a lift somewhere? Could I drive you? Could I, let me help you with your bags? Can I put your suitcase in the car? Um, Asur, Kohen. If Kohen is being Mishamesh. Big machloket, if a, a Kohen, if a rabbi is allowed to have his student Kohen serve him. Fascinating, okay? They say that a person, a rabbi is allowed to if he feels that it will help his student grow, because ultimately then it's for him. There's a fascinating Pnei Yehoshua about this in one of the sugyot in the Gemara. However, coming back here, v'kidashto, and you will sanctify the Kohen. What's very interesting to me is actually, taking a look at this, we realize that when the Torah, when, uh, when the Torah talks about the nature and the relationship of the Kohen with his, with his position, we realize that there's many, many different things going on here, and it's not just about getting an honor of who says Berkat Amazon. Thank you, Yitzchak. You know what the answer is, Rabotai? This Kohen that you all want to be, because he's getting called up first, because he seems to be in a higher position, the Torah says, well, you know, if his best friend passes away, this guy he can't go to the funeral. He can't go lift the thing, he can't become Tameh. This guy, this Kohen, there's different laws for him. If he wants to marry someone who's a Girusha, who's divorced, he can't marry her. He's allowed to marry Amar. So you're Yisrael, you can marry either of them. You're a Kohen, you can't marry a Girusha, you can marry Amana. You're a Kohen Gadol, you can't marry Amana, you can't marry a widower. Kohen Gadol, only Isha Betul Betulea Yikach, he has to take a woman who's never been married. It's Kohen Gadol, that's the law for him. Okay? S similar concepts you find throughout. A Kohen who's supposed to do the Avodah, what if he's a Baal Mum? If he, he's a, he has a, a blemish, he's a, is the, I don't know, he has a problem with disabled. A disabled Kohen does not do the Avodah in the Beit HaMikdash. Fascinating, right? I always thought it was so interesting. I mean, again, I don't mean this as a joke, but I'm a nun. But the Pasuk says that um, you, uh, for, you want to build a Mizbeach, you're not allowed to have stairs. You're only allowed to have a ramp. And yet, a disabled Kohen is not allowed to, right? It's like, almost like it was written for a disabled Kohen. Like, we don't have stairs, you have a ramp, but he's not allowed to. I, again, not as a joke, but I'm just saying it's an interesting thing. You look at that, you're like, oh, that's where it's going. It's, a, it's a disabled friendly. It's a, a wheelchair accessible. No, no, Kohen Ba'amun can what does that mean? It's not his fault that he is disabled. What are you doing? Why would God do that? Why would God? This is so, it's so unfair. You know, the guy, he, now he lost his access to a physical world. He turns to the spiritual world. He comes to the Beit HaMikdash and they're like, not today, honey. No. How could that be? Stories about people who, uh, you know, uh, they finally find someone. They want to get married. They're Kohen. They find out Girusha. Why? Because when they were in school as a kid, they had a joke, they had a game, da 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 da. The girl, in this joke, at the end, they said they have to get a get because they were joking about the Kiddushin. Now the guy can't get married. They find this out three weeks before the wedding. Now, obviously, there's certain cases you have to figure out was it Lichumra, not Lichumra, lots of different things, but there's, these are real issues. So, why, why is Hashem doing this? Why would you make the guy a Kohen and then have him be a Baalmum and then be posel him for the thing? Why are you telling the guy, someone who passed away, the Kohen Gadol, by the way, the Kohen, he's allowed to go to the funeral of those that are closest to him. Kohen Gadol can't go to a funeral of even his Kirovim, even the ones, even his own family members. So you have all these different hierarchies of people that are higher, people that are medium, people that are lower, but at the same time they have higher responsibilities, more difficult things, what's going on here? So I want to share with you something that I saw that brought me a, a tremendous amount of chizuk. It's a brilliant story. There's a... <laughs> just saying ahead of time, this story is not a true story. 
case you're wondering if it was true, I want to tell you in advance, it's not a true story. There was once a bear, and the bear was starving. Haziz, running around, he can't find any fish, or maybe he's not pescatarian, I don't know. He's running around, it's very difficult. He can't, you know, Parnassah is difficult for everybody. You know, Hazit the bear, he couldn't figure out. And finally, he says, you know what, as embarrassing as this is, he says, I'm going to go try and get a job. I'm going to go see, I'm going to audition for the part of bear at the zoo. He goes to the zoo, he comes to the head of the zoo, the, you know, the, uh, the manager. He says, uh, sir, I would like to apply for a job here. It's very difficult out there. It's, you know, I, I, my standards have lowered. I would like to apply for the part of, the, of a bear in the zoo. The manager says, I'm, I'm really sorry. The position for bear has already been filled. He says, but I do have an opening for, uh, for a gorilla. The bear says, but I'm a bear. <laughs> he says, listen, if you stand far enough away from the glass, these people, I'm out, I say, you know, I'm out, I say, I have no idea. You know, you just, you swing a little bit from the branches, right? You smoke a cigarette in the corner, right? You do, you, you know, go like this. Well, I will show you, we'll train you. No one will know the difference. It'll be fine. Are you in or you're not? I think it could work out good for both of us. I need a mom, I need a gorilla. You need some food. The bear says, humiliated, but he says, you know what, okay. He makes sure to stand far away from the glass. Had that fantastic, he's swinging from the branches, he's climbing the trees, smoking the thing, he's going, you know, ooh, ooh, ooh. everyone is very happy. They all leave, the, the bear is exhausted. He's never worked this hard in his life. Had that his whole life, he's hibernating. <laughs> now he's running around, <laughs> right? It's difficult, okay? Now, at least now it's dinner. They come, they bring him dinner, a plate, three bananas, right? You know, <laughs> a couple of peanuts. He eats. This is not even a first course, not even a, you know, appetizer. He's dying. Literally. The bear, two days of this, he's losing his mind. He's so hungry. He feels like he's going to pass away. He feels, you know what, I have no alternative. I got to go see if there's anything else available. So he walks around, maybe something else in the zoo. After hours, he walks around until finally he finds a cage. And on the door of the cage, it says, bears. He climbs over the fence. He sees in the, what's it called, in the enclosure, a mountain of food, meat, fish, chicken, not eaten. He doesn't want to steal anyone else's food. So he's sniffing around till finally he sees in the distance, in the back, there's a, there's a bear there. So he says to the bear in the corner, he says, are you eating this food? The guy says, I can't eat what? He says, are you eating this food? The guy says, no, Cabo, have it. The guy eats, wow, it's fantastic. Ah, he can breathe. Finally, he walks up to the, to the bear and he says, you know, what's going on? How can we not eat the food? The guy comes, the, the bear comes out from behind the, the tree. He says, listen, they bring me this food every day. He goes, it's not my kind of food. I'm not, as he comes down from behind the tree, he looks, he sees, ah, there's a gorilla. <laughs> there's a gorilla in the bear cage. The gorilla says, all I'm dying for some bananas. <laughs> you know, if only they brought me some nuts every day. They bring me for, you know, for lay mignon. They bring me, you know, chicken marsala. I can't anymore. It's, you know, fick me. I, I'm not, the, I'm not, my system is not built for this. The bear says, I can't believe it. He says, so why are you here? He says, I'll tell you the truth. I was in the wild. Paradise, I was very hard. I figured I came to the, I came to the, what's it called? To the manager. The manager said, listen, we already have a gorilla. <laughs> Right? But if you want to apply for the position of bear, no problem. Right? You know, and the guy says, I'm not a bear. He says, well, I'll tell you. The, the bear is already shaking his head. He says, what are you shaking your head at me? He goes, I know exactly what you're going through. He says, how could you possibly? He says, well, you know, I also applied and I went to the thing and they only told me they had a position for or a gorilla. So I'm a bear masquerading as a gorilla. You're a gorilla masquerading as a bear. I have a fantastic idea. Tomorrow morning, let's go to the manager of the stupid zoo. And we'll tell the guy, you know, I'll go be a bear in a bear cage. You'll be a gorilla in a gorilla cage. We don't need a bear, gorilla, gorilla, bear. The guy says, sounds like a great idea. They have the best night of sleep that they've had in a long time. Tomorrow morning, everything's going to be right. Yes? The next morning comes, they both turn up at the office of the manager. They tell him, listen, we just figured this out. You know, we both applied in the wrong time. We got the wrong job. But all we need to do now to set it straight is to switch positions. I'll go there, they'll go here. Everything's going to be great. The manager says, I'm really sorry, but uh, no. Everything has to stay as it is. The bear says, are you crazy? 
He says, I'm actually a bear. Uh, this guy is, a, he's actually a gorilla. What's the, why would you not, you know? And they're arguing, arguing. The guy is stubborn like a hamor. The guy he doesn't want to hear nothing. Everything they say, the guy says, nope, nope, nope. Finally, the guy says, the bear is so frustrated. He says to the manager, he says, I don't understand you. This is a perfect solution. Why are you being so stubborn like a hamor? The guy says, listen, I'll tell you the truth. I was out in the wild. I was very hungry. I came to the place. I asked for the position of Hamor. They said, Hamor, we have filled. But if you want, you can be the manager. If you want, you can be the manager. <laughs> Listen, they trained me up. <laughs> and here I am. My friends, I read the story. And I was, I was blown away. First of all, very cute. But what a deep messer. What a deep lesson. You know, the nature of people is such that people don't really ever know what or how to be. They don't know what or how to act. So how do we choose? How do we decide what person we want to be? Which chasidut we want to follow? Which minhagim we want to, you know, we, we, we like? Which rabbi speaks to our shoresh and nishama? How do we decide that? Most often, a person looks and they see something and then they make a decision based on the fact that this is the thing, this is the... This is where I could go. This is the closest rabbi. This is the closest. But Rabotai, people were built in different ways. We were built not to be able to imitate or to mimic somebody. We were built to be able to find exactly what Borei Olam made for us. And even though sometimes the job of being us is a little bit more difficult than being the other person, my friends, Ultimately, you cannot survive being somebody else. Says the Pasuk, Vikidashto, make him, elevate him. You know what? He doesn't look like he's such a wise person, a Tamid Chacham. You don't think he deserves your respect? Ki et lechem Elohecha umakriv. This guy, his respect, it doesn't emanate from his Talmud Torah. It emanates from him doing his job. And even if you have less respect for him, it doesn't matter. Rabotai, we have two systems operating in simultaneously. One is a person who has a societal role. And one is, uh, and one is a person who's achieving things on a, based on his merit. But just because you've done a lot of great things, it doesn't mean that you're cut out to be able to fulfill a role. Sometimes you have a person who's a, in a position of power, and you know what, you're much smarter than him. But not always is it that the smarter person is capable of being the leader. I've seen many people who run companies who are not the smartest person in the room. And you know what, the smartest people in the room often think they have a chip on their shoulder and they think, you know what, I should be sitting in that seat. I'm the smart guy in the room. I have the good ideas. Rohi, that's true. But not every person who has great ideas makes a great leader. Just not that way. That's not how it works in the world. Not every CEO is the smartest person. Not every rabbi is the smartest person. Sometimes a person's capabilities to do the job that they came here to do, they don't come specifically from the merits that they have. They come from gifts that they were gifted by God before they were born. Leadership skills, talents. They have an inborn empathy. They understand, they feel people. That's something that the guy was blessed with. No matter how much you studied, how many books you read with empathy in the title, you might not ever develop that sense of natural empathy of someone that was born with it. Someone who therefore might be cut out for a position of leadership. Says the Pasuk, Viki dashto ki et lechem Elohecha umakriv. Kadosh yelach. He has to be holy. Because you know what? Ki kadosh ani Hashem mekadishchem. I'm holy and I decided who got the job of Kohen. I decided who's going to be a Levi. I decided who's allowed to be metameh, become impure to the people around him. I decide. You're asking the question, why should someone who touches their relative on their funeral, why should that guy be tameh if he's a Kohen Gadol? It's his uh, brother. It's his father. Of course, he looks like he's doing a mitzvah. No, Hashem says, I make the rules. I, I know how and I know why and I know what is best for each person in their situation. And I found this so powerful, and please tell me if you appreciate this, a chidush that I thought of, we were zochet to think of this, uh, this week. 
The Pasuk says, just earlier, a couple of Perakim uh, before, the Pasuk says about Borei Olam, God says, I am God, Hashochen Itam, I dwell with them, Betoch Tumatam, inside or amidst their Tumah. First of all, what a beautiful Pasuk. That Borei Olam says, I, I don't need everything to be holy and perfect in order to be with the Jewish people. I dwell with them, betoch tumatam, inside of their tumah. I am where the Jewish people need me to be. I descend to them. I don't sit on top of a mountain, aloof. I'm there with the Jewish people. But I remember reading this pasuk, and when I saw it this past week, uh, I was learning, I almost started crying. Hashochen itam betoch tumatam doesn't only mean inside the tumah. It's also an allegory. It's also trying to catch your attention. Because what's inside the word tum'atam? Tet, mem, alif, taf, mem. Inside of the word tum'atam is the letters mem, mem alif, taf. Mem. Emet spells also, but it spells the word me'et. We say that word in halal. Me'et Adonai Hayitazot he niflad be'enenu. This came from God. It's wondrous. It's wondrous in our eyes. But niflat also doesn't only mean it's wondrous. We use the word niflat in a different context also. Lo nifleti mimcha velo rechokahi. The Torah is not separate. It's not far away from you. In Hallel, what we're saying is, Me'et Adonai Hayat This came from God. God, Niflati Be'enenu. It's far away from what we think, from what we understand, from what we believe is the best case scenario. But you know what makes it palatable? You know what makes it good? You know what makes it part of a prayer of gratitude to God? Me'et Amunai It came from Him. God says, Hashochen Itam Betoch Tumatam. I live with them inside of their Tumah. The letters inside of Tumatam is Me'et. Hashem says, sometimes I present you with scenarios of Tumah where you feel impure, where you have to do something that maybe you didn't want to do. And sometimes there are scenarios where you wanted to do something, but I don't let you do it. Understand that if I made you a Kohen Ba'al Mum, I knew what I was doing. And while you have this position and you eat tirumah, Baal Mum has some of the ideas of a Kohen, but to serve in the Beit HaMikdash, that's not your job. I wanted you, be, you to be a Kohen that doesn't serve. I wanted you to be a Kohen that's married to a certain woman. And this woman looks like she's the right one. On paper, everything's right. But if she's not the one, if she's not, if she's Girusha and you're Kohen, She's not the one for you. I prepared someone else. Me'et amunai. And how does a person feel? How do we make ourselves okay when scenarios come up in our lives where we feel that we were nitma, we were pushed into a situation where we didn't want to? We remember that it is Borei Olam that gives us our jobs. And a gorilla in a bear cage, or a bear in a gorilla cage, or a hamor in the management office, all of them are like a fish out of water. And no matter how much and how well they play the part of somebody else, it is not their job, it is not what brings them life, not what energizes, not what makes them stronger in their mission in this world. And I love this idea, because it's in the same pasuk. Like the pasuk says, shochen ha shochen itam, Betoch tumatam. Itam is the same letters as the word me'et. So if you're looking in a situation of tumah and you don't understand how I got here, so unfair, it doesn't make any sense. The answer is me'et. Inside the tumatam is that this came from God. And right now, Rabotai, you want to know why you're going through this? In order, hashochen itam with them because it's this situation which actually makes you, you. This difficulty, this challenge was designed specifically with you in mind to be able to bring out your very, very best. My friends, that is therefore the reason why we have this system of merit and this system of societal. 
Every person has to do their very best with what they've been given. But ultimately, there are certain cases where we see in life where we want something or we feel we deserve something, but it doesn't come our way. Our pasuk is reminding us not to be down, not to be upset, not to be bitter for things that happen to us in our life, rather to be able to experience and to see this through a process, through a prism, through a, a, an approach where we understand that everything that comes our way was given to us specifically by God to be able to raise us to our highest level of possible potential. And you will make him holy. I am holy. And I'm the one who decides who goes where, who gets what, who marries who, who touches what. And ultimately, um, I place you in the, be- in the very best place for you to be able to succeed. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen ve'amen. Rabbi Chalani.